Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to another Monday. I know it's Monday, June 24, 2024, about 11.36 a.m. California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows uh, some movement there in California once again with a 2.0 and a 1.5 coming in there. So let's cover activity overnight first, where we did see a, a decent-sized earthquake out here in the Vanuatu region. 157 kilometers deep for a 6.3. We're getting a lot of deep activity stirring up back here again. That uh, will just continue to amplify conditions here across the area of Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, and the Tonga Trench area. So just a rinse and repeat type of cycle out here in terms of earthquake movement. I uh, also did see a little bit of activity stirring up back here into the New Zealand area once again with uh, quite a few threes up and down the plate boundary. Fortunately for now, that's uh, you know those are some low-grade earthquakes, but uh, still somewhat uh, active there across the New Zealand area, and uh, there is uh, some you know possibility of some larger quake movement out there. Just uh, been a little while since they've seen any large-scale movement, so there's always that concern. But for now, quite a few threes uh, there across the Taiwan area southward. Not quite as much clustering going on here today in this area. Uh, they're almost always getting earthquake activity, but it looks a little bit less today than normal. Uh, looks like most of the activity is stirring up south here into the Tonga and the Vanuatu area. Also the west coast here, California. Let's go check this out, see what's going on up here. What we're lighting up here in the last couple hours or so. Got some activity stirring up uh, in the southern California region. If we bring up the 2.5 map and above, that does show some of the more discrete uh, larger than the microquake size earthquakes out here. Uh, looks like we've seen a 2.6 here on the San Jacinto Fault Zone and the most recent a 2.9 a little bit further up north into the Los Angeles area. Uh, of course this region has been uh, a little shaky out here. A little bit of swarming going on in specific areas. It tells me right here that this area is regionally strained in stress. Not just one specific area but on a broad scale out here. So keep an eye across the, the um, plate boundary, the San Andreas Fault, up into Northern California, or up Central California area. I've got uh, one earthquake here around the Long Valley Super Volcano. Nothing big. It's been a little while since we've seen any major swarming out here. Of course, uh, it comes in waves. The latest one does show a 1.7, really nothing big. Up into Northern California here, a couple small earthquakes just outside of Mount Saint, or the uh, Mount Lassen area. At, uh, getting awfully close here to the park. Lassen Peak sits uh, just right up here in this area. Of course, a lot of um, a lot of uh, volcanic activity here in terms of the heated areas below. There's quite a few hot springs up here. I've been up here numerous times. I prefer to go up there in the in the springtime when it's not so hot. But uh, yeah, these earthquakes coming in about five kilometers deep this morning a 2.1 and a 2.6 let me go over and check out the usgs notification here on mount lassen there in northern california of course 1916 i believe is the last eruption fairly recent uh, in terms of ge geologically speaking 1916 now yeah, obviously a lot for human age but uh, there's those two earthquakes down here near the seismograph station. That one's not working. Uh, GPS displacement here doesn't... Uh, oh, there's January 2024. Hard to tell. That's a little choppy. I'm sure there's more uh, better GPS stations there to monitor. I'm trying to find an active... That one's not working, obviously, because it didn't even pick up any earthquakes whatsoever. So that station is irrelevant to monitoring the data how about this one right here this one as well we check that one that one's not working there we go this one's working though still somewhat close there to the uh, earthquake activity there's a there's those two earthquakes of magnitudes one point or 2.1 and 2.6 now if you look though okay these are going to be the two larger ones there's, there's a handful of other smaller quakes in here as well so you could probably add another six or seven earthquakes onto the USGS map there, but they're smaller, probably below, uh, if not a one, well, they're definitely below two, but these could be up in the one range maybe. Maybe a little bit smaller than a, a one magnitude. 
But uh, either way, a little bit of earthquake activity. There's the S waves here. See those wavy, squiggly lines there from that 6.3 in the Vanuatu area this morning. It just goes to show you how these seismic waves can travel around the globe here and be picked up on this uh, seism on any seismograph station if it's properly working. There's a P wave, it looks like, from that large earthquake. Uh, either way, a little bit of earthquake activity there around the volcano in Northern California. Not uh, really noticing any huge uptick here. Let's see if they got any gas emission stations up here. There's always um, quite a bit of elevated gas out here. Of course, this one's not working either figures um, let's go check out GPS displacement here on a different scale see what we got I haven't really checked out the inflation out here lately uh, seasonal inflation that's these little spikes coming up that just happens after all the uh, the snow melting and the uh, ground absorbing all that water it happens every season that uh, is a functionable station, but I'm not seeing any type of uh, interesting activity on it. Let's see here. This is 2024 as well. 22. I don't really see anything of major uh, issue out here as far as like inflation or rising of the land that would indicate, you know, something going on underneath the volcano. Just for now, uh, a couple earthquakes there southeast of the Mount Lassen area. And uh, there's fault systems that run up here. You got the uh, the Butt Creek Fault Zone, Stover Mountain Fault, and also the Almanor Fault Zone, and I'm sure some other faults that run through up here. But sp specifically here around the summit area of the volcano, which sits about uh, only about five miles away, not a whole lot of activity stirring up there. But we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Remember the Cascadia Subduction Zone. You got the Gorda Plate here. Uh, that is the plate, I believe, that mainly fuels the volcanoes here in Northern California. Further up north into the Cascades, you're going to have the Juan de Fuca plate. All this, of course, subducts underneath this region, and you get the volcanoes there at the surface slowly but surely over time. Nothing going on there across the Cascadia for now. Yesterday's activity was still somewhat elevated here with about 403 epicenters of trimmer. They're into uh, mainly the Vancouver Island ranges there up north, but still a little bit down here into southern Oregon. And, um, you know, most of these trimmers that have happened over the last month have been there on the southern end of the Cascadia. So we'll continue to watch that, and then we'll check back later on, see how today's events go. Let's see if there's any more uh, elevated activity. Mount St. Helens here, still seeing some movement. A couple smaller quakes, mainly from yesterday. Uh, throughout the rest of the Intermountain West areas and uh, Yellowstone, pretty quiet. Let's go double check the Yellowstone overview <clears throat> and see what's going on. There's our big time wind event. They had 40, 50 mile per hour winds there yesterday. That calmed down overnight. Does look like it's starting to come back up here across the Moose Creek, Idaho area and a couple other stations there around Old Faithful. Uh, just double check for verification purposes here and see if that is indeed what's going on. Uh, you can already see some wind lighting up out here. Got to go to these wind gusts. That gives us a good indicator of what's going on here across the park. And just to the eastern side, got 50 mile per hour winds again and uh, 40 mile per hour winds here on the western side. So these seismograph stations are going to light up similar to what we've seen yesterday as well. So watch that throughout the day if you want. Definitely wind events out there. All right, uh, let's see, Texas, Oklahoma, typical movement out in earthquake country out there. New Madrid seismic zone, 2.4, late last night. Six kilometers deep there. This is another major zone that's been building up some strain. These intraplate uh, earthquakes can get rather large here. Remember the uh, series of large earthquakes back in the early uh, eight. I believe it was the early 1800s here. I can't remember the exact date, but uh, yeah, the new Madrid... The new Madrid earthquake activity was a bunch of big ones out there. It's been fairly quiet in these times that we're living in right now. It's all subject to change here as time goes on. All right, across the rest of the uh, planet here, a little earthquake down in the South Sandwich Islands area. 
from this morning on 4.6 Hawaii. Anything going on out here yet? A little bit of movement further out here across the southeast rift zone. Latest one shows a 1.8, four kilometers deep there into the area. Uh, let's go check this out real quick, see what's going on here. Which is still, it looks like the volcano still at a yellow in advisory. Even with this continued ongoing uh, elevated inflation activity here. Deformation data overnight. Let's see what we got. Uh, went down a little bit, a little bit of deflation, but this is very minimal. But it is a sizable um, drop here compared to the past, uh, almost the past month here, past 20 days since we've seen that eruption there on the southwest rift zone. Very short lived eruption there at Kilauea Volcano. We've been going up and up and up since, but this is a decent sized drop there across the summit and east rift zone uh, but it does look like things are starting to come back up here but we'll continue to watch it no eruption yet uh, further out and about here across the area let's see what we have Mediterranean fairly normal in terms of earthquake activity the Atlantic Ocean got one earthquake down there that 4.6 couple earthquakes up around the China area and uh, you know, overall, a moderately active day here. Again, got deeper, super deep earthquakes in the Fiji area, Tonga Trench region. That, uh, you know, just going to light up this whole area once again with some further movement. That's just the way it goes. I, it, get all this earthquake activity following this deeper movement. We'll keep an eye on that area today. Um, let's see here. Did we have a something larger over here let me see I guess I don't have to go through all those I just got to do that 3.2 Cobb Mountain area this morning of course that's uh, associated with the uh, hydrothermal plants that sit out here scattered out and about and that that earthquake is literally in the parking lot of the um, one of those hydrothermal plants here as you can see quite active out here across specifically these couple Hydrothermal plants today, creating some power, creating some earthquakes as well. All right, uh, what else we got here? Anything else going on in terms of uh, unusual activity? Mediterranean or the uh, Mil Middle America Trench here still active. South America region about the same. Got a 4.3 uh, coming in right now to this area. Looks like a secondary one in the uh, Tajikistan or Tajikistan, however you want to pronounce that. Um, yeah, a couple earthquakes up there today. So let's see what we got for space weather activity. Now that we have uh, a better perspective of 3723, that former sunspot there that produced numerous X flares over the last month or so. Still a giant spot here. And uh, a little bit of complexity within it still. Obviously, it did produce a near X flare uh, early yesterday morning. Still keeping an eye on that as that uh, evolves. And it could gain some strength. You just never know. There's a, a couple areas of sunspots around it that are kind of picking up a little bit of steam as well. We got um, a little bit of disorganized activity currently facing us here right now on the earth facing side of the sun but we'll watch this one in the coming days 3723 uh, overall threat 15 percent chance for an x flare m flare at 60 c flare around 99 percent chance or so did have a long duration m flare event last night there on the uh, southwestern limb of the sun it still looks like it's on going out here with that magnetic uh those arches going on let's see here Aside from that, no major auroras in the forecast. We'll see if we can get that to change here with an Earth-directed CME. But for now, we'll just continue to keep an eye on those uh, couple sunspots. Current day one outlook here for severe weather does show an enhanced. This is an added zone here from last night. Added a 5% chance for tornado probability there across uh, the uh, Minneapolis area, St. Paul region as well. Here in the uh, darker color, the green is a 2% chance for tornado probability. Got some big time wind and a little bit of hail up there as well. 
So just pay attention to the weather up there in this area if you're out here today. Uh, let's see here. I think we covered the asteroid approaches here yesterday. I don't think they've added anything on here today. One coming up here tomorrow, safely passing us at a million miles or so, 62 foot. There's that giant one, 7,000 feet asteroid. 7,000 foot asteroid. Goodness, that's uh, quite a bit. That's a large, very large asteroid. But as you can see, safe distance. Really nothing a major concern, at least here in the asteroid forecast. <laughs> Goodness. All right, uh, what else we got? Anything else major going on out here, folks? Um, National Hurricane Center. No tropical cyclone activity is expected out here in the eastern Pacific. The Atlantic area, maybe something brewing off there, off into the um, off the coast of South America region. A little, well, not even a it's a zero percent chance here, so less than forty percent down here. But uh, that's good news, right? Want to keep these. Uh, hurricanes and tropical systems at bay because they can do quite a bit of damage if they come into the right areas out here the waters are quite warm and uh, there's a lot of fuel for these things to to chew on so to speak and gain some strength all right folks i'm out of here have yourself a good day it's monday it kind of it definitely feels like a monday that's for sure seismograph stations out here fairly quiet not a whole lot going on for now, a little spike there in Southern California, the uh, Barrett Station. And uh, we'll just keep an eye on things here today, see how it goes. Enjoy your Monday. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on.